Republican Congressman elect Carlos Corbello. Now, he's going to represent Florida's southernmost uh, district when he's sworn in at the start of the 114th Congress. And we have him now joining us from Tampa. Um, Congressman elect, thank you very much for joining us. Congratulations on the election. Good luck to you when you serve. Please tell me why you feel that the president is making a mistake. Chris, good morning. Look, my generation wants the same thing that all generations of Cuban Americans want. Number one, we want a strong United States that leads. We did not see that yesterday. The United States, in exchange for uh, Alan Gross, who we're very happy is back home, uh, uh, gave away three criminal spies, one of uh, who was convicted of murdering American citizens, and uh, uh, gave Cuba everything with regards to diplomatic relations. That's bad for U.S. national security. And we also want freedom for the Cuban people. You know, for uh, over 50 years, the occupant in the White House, no matter the party, has had a policy of solidarity with the Cuban people, with the political prisoners, with the widows of those who have been executed by the Cuban government over uh, the last 56 years. That has now changed. And you can understand why so many people in Miami feel abandoned, uh, disappointed. And but it's not a, it's a complex situation, though, right, Congressman? I mean, let's put up the poll for the second. Uh, this is the New York Times poll, October 1st and 5th, 2014. Do you approve or disapprove of reestablishing diplomatic and trade relations with Cuba? 56-29. That's overall. Now, of course, that's a little deceptive. If you were to poll people of Cuban descent, you'd get a different number. Uh, it certainly would be closer. But isn't there something to be said about what apparently hasn't worked and the need for trying something different? Why is that not something you're receptive to? Look, uh, this idea that if we give the Castro regime everything it wants, because we know the Castro regime has been lobbying uh, for these changes for a long time, that all of a sudden something's going to change in Cuba, that's just uh, completely false. Every other country in the world uh, has uh, commercial and diplomatic relations with Cuba, yet nothing has changed uh, on the island. This is very simple. Does the United States want to be on the side uh, of the victims, uh, the people who have had to come uh, to these uh, welcoming shores over 56 years because uh, they've had their property confiscated, because they've had their relatives imprisoned, or do we want to be on the side of the same men that have perpetrated all of these crimes throughout the years? As an American, because I'm an American citizen born in this country, I want to be on the right side of history. And what the president did yesterday is, for the first time in 56 years, put an American president at the table with the Castro brothers and no longer in solidarity with the victims uh, uh, of all uh, of these crimes. And by the way, Chris, something that gets lost in all of this conversation, yes. the Cuban government is an enemy of the United States. This is a government uh, who only last year was caught trafficking arms illegally to North Korea. This is a government that's been complicitous in the murdering of uh, young men and women on the streets of Caracas in Venezuela. This is not a good neighbor. This is not a country that we should be uh, welcoming and accepting of. Uh, however, we shouldn't be surprised well, because President, yeah. Congressman, I, I understand the perspective you're offering. And look, we had people coming up to us last night, and they said, you know, Cuomo, I know your name. Your people came here for opportunity. My people came here because they had to. They were chased out of their country. They lost everything. And now you're rewarding the same men who did that to them. And that has always been true. I don't think the president or anybody else is trying to take away from that. But what do you say to the Cuban people who are so desperate, who are without so many, uh, you know, really just freedoms that we take for granted here, and that they see this as hope. They see this as a chance of better things for them. What do you say to them? Chris, I don't know uh, which Cubans on the island uh, you've talked to, but the opposition leaders, the heroes that are fighting uh, on the streets of Havana and other cities in Cuba for freedom so that they can enjoy the same freedoms in Cuba that we do in the United States, they feel abandoned. They feel very disappointed. They feel like they no longer have that ally that over the last 56 years, even when every other country in the world has abandoned them, uh, the United States has been there. The American president has been there. And yesterday, 
Uh, a lot of those people feel like the American president sold out the same way, by the way, that the American president is selling out uh, on Iran and sitting at the table with the mullahs, the same way the American president drew red lines in Syria and ignored them, and hundreds of thousands of people have now died. This is a, a U.S. foreign policy under this president that is diminishing American national security and is abandoning so many victims of tyranny and oppression throughout the world like the Cuban people. Congressman, uh, elect Carlos Corbello, thank you very much for offering your perspective. Uh, there's certainly very strong opinions down here when, unfortunately, it's that uh, one of those cliches in politics. You're going to have to wait and see whether or not the opportunity that's being offered to the regime is taken the right way. But thank you very much for your perspective. Thanks for having Good me. Good luck have going forward, day. sir. Enjoy Miami. All right, Mick, back to you, New York.